Something spectacular is coming to the night sky on September 7th, 2025. For more than an hour, the full moon will slip into the Earth's shadow, turning the lunar disk blood red. It's a total lunar eclipse. And here is the amazing part. Nearly 85% of the world's population has a chance to see it. Stay tuned till the end, because we're going to show you some handy online resources so you can find out exactly what the eclipse will look like from your location. A lunar eclipse can only happen during a full moon. That's when the Earth, the Sun and the Moon all line up, with the Earth in the middle casting its shadow onto the Moon. But not every full moon gives us a lunar eclipse. Why is that? That's because the Moon's orbit is tilted by about 5 degrees relative to the Earth's path around the Sun. Most of the time, the Moon passes just above or just below the Earth's shadow. Only when the full Moon occurs at those crossing points, the nodes, do we get an eclipse. On September 7th, everything aligns. The eclipse will be visible across Australia, Asia, Africa and Europe, but not the Americas. In India, where I am based, the entire eclipse will be on display, with the Moon high enough above the horizon to see very comfortably. Here is how the events will unfold. At about 3.30 pm Universal Time, the Moon will enter the Earth's penumbra, the fuzzy greyish edge of a shadow where only part of the light is blocked and makes for a transition from total darkness to full light. An hour later, the Moon enters the dark part, the umbral shadow of the Earth and the partial eclipse begins. The Moon gets progressively blocked until about 5.30 pm Universal when totality strikes. The entire Moon stays within the umbra for over 80-ish minutes and this is when you see the iconic copper-red U of totality. The point of maximum eclipse happens at about 6.11 pm Universal. By 6.53 pm UTC, the Moon begins to slip back out of the Earth's shadow, first into the partial phase and then the penumbral, until the night sky returns to normal. Here is a table you can use for reference of these landmark moments of the eclipse. A natural question arises, why doesn't the Moon just fully disappear during a total eclipse? It's after all deep inside the dark umbral shadow of the Earth. Instead, it glows a deep coppery red. Now this happens because some sunlight bends or refracts through the Earth's atmosphere. As it does so, blue light, which has a shorter wavelength, gets scattered away due to Rayleigh scattering leaving only the oranges and the reds to paint the lunar surface. And unlike a solar eclipse, this one is completely safe to watch with your own eyes. No special glasses are needed. Astronomers say there's another color you should be looking out for, turquoise, which sometimes accompanies the red as a thin band around the moon's edges. This comes from the Earth's ozone layer in the upper stratosphere which absorbs red light preferentially and actually makes the passing light rays a little bit bluer. It's subtle, but in binoculars or a small telescope, the effect can be breathtaking. If you want to plan your viewing, I'll strongly suggest using timeanddate.com. It has precise maps and timings for any city on Earth. I'm leaving the link in the description below, along with some other useful resources. If you want to simulate the night sky during the eclipse, head over to Stellarium Web to play with interactive sky charts. So, when you step outside on September 7th and watch the moon turn red, you are not just seeing an eclipse. It's geometry, orbital mechanics and scattering, all playing out above our heads in real time. You are watching physics draw with light and shadow on the largest canvas we know the night sky. So clear skies and I'll see you on the other side.